Hey, Happy Friday. To seek real cross-platform messaging became a thing, WorldCoin was launched to determine if you are indeed a real human, and Nintendo showed us the future of advertising. Welcome to the Friday Checkout. This video was sponsored by Nebula. Okay, this week we start the brief with Lenovo reportedly working on a Steam Deck competitor with an 8-inch screen that is running Windows and is apparently called the Lenovo Legion Go. This sounds a lot like the Asus ROG Ally, and I guess it might be shown off at IFA in Berlin later this month. Next, Nothing launched a sub-brand called CMF, which is supposed to be a budget option that will release earbuds and a smartwatch coming this year. Sounds fun, but I can't be the only one who thinks that this logo is just incredibly ugly and hard to to read as well. Next, Red Magic announced some pretty bonkers new low latency gaming earbuds called the Cyber Buds DAO. They have a transparent design plus a docking station for your PC with RGB lights and a volume knob. Woo, gamers! That's what I imagine their marketing department sounded like when they released these. <laughs> Now, talking about the RGB, Philips Hue decided that lights are not enough for the company, so now they are planning to release four home cameras to keep your place safe. Not bad, I guess. And German chip-making giant Infineon has also just made a PCB that is actually water-soluble. Instead of fiberglass, these boards are made of natural fibers and a sort of polymer which can dissolve. That is an interesting idea for cutting down on e-waste. Then over at Uber, the company announced its first ever profits. That's right, after losing about $31.5 billion since 2014, the company finally made about $300 million in operating profit back this quarter. So, you know, better late than never, I guess. Next, X, or Twitter, I guess, is now letting users hide their check marks that prove that they have a subscription for Blue. This comes after many people started mass blocking users with Blue checks, including with many automatic browser extensions. This means that Elon Musk managed to turn the once coveted symbol into something that is often embarrassing enough that people would want to hide it. And I heard this idea that he should charge an extra subscription for people who want to hide their badges. You know, like a subscription on top of a subscription. That's kind of brilliant, I think. Anyway, moving on to China, draft regulations are being proposed that would limit teens between 16 and 18 to two hours of mobile use each day, while anyone under 18 would be prevented from accessing the internet between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. That would be incredibly drastic, and if it passes, it will be incredibly fascinating to watch how this impacts society. And finally, in the brief, a YouTube channel is running a test where a bunch of people are folding a Motorola Razr Plus and the Galaxy Z Flip 5 until they break. The Motorola hinge had an issue back at 43,800 folds already, so that is not exactly great, but by the time I recorded this, both of the phones were still going, and the Galaxy is rated for 200,000 folds, so they might be here for a while. Okay, and for my first story of the week, the future where you might be able to send a message from any messaging app to any other messaging app might be becoming a reality, starting with Google. So the news is that Google is adopting a new end-to-end -end encryption protocol known as Messaging Layer Security, or MLS, for Google Messages. MLS is a sort of open end-to-end -end encryption protocol that was developed by the Internet Engineering Task Force in March that allows for two different messaging apps to exchange messages while still keeping end-to-end -end encryption. In in other words, if WhatsApp, for example, also adopted this, you could theoretically send encrypted messages between the two platforms. That is really cool. And the question is, why did Google decide to adopt this? Well, first, the European Union's Digital Markets Act is coming into force soon, which will theoretically legally require messaging apps to become cross-compatible, and this might be our first look at the company trying to prepare for that. But second, of course, Google does not have a massively successful messaging platform of its own, so it is really incentivized in everything being opened up, unlike for example, Apple and WhatsApp, and we don't really know how those will react just yet. Also involved in the development of the project are Amazon Web Services, Wicker, Cisco, Cloudflare, Mozilla, and more, and the biggest challenge was apparently figuring out how to manage encryption keys for users across group chats and across platforms. I'll link to all the technical details down in the description, but they theoretically figured this out up until 2,000 participants, so this could become a real thing, at least in the EU. That is, if the tech really works as advertised, and if it is also adopted, which is still yet to be seen. Okay, and my second story of the week has to be the launch of the extremely bizarre new crypto project called WorldCoin. The company uses special biometric cameras shaped like an orb to scan people's iris to check that they are human and unique, and upon completion, they give that person a unique idea that they can then use to easily prove that they are a human online. 
The company doesn't ask for any personal information and claims to only store a unique hash made from the iris on the blockchain, nothing else. So they claim that what they're doing is actually privacy respecting. Also, as a reward for the scan, users are given world coin tokens, which are a kind of cryptocurrency that they can either sell or hold on to for later. And the idea is that with AI becoming incredibly sophisticated on the internet, we'll have a really hard time distinguishing that from real humans, so we'll need some kind of a real human identification like this in the future. Which, on the one hand, is fair, I guess, but on the other, the project has a really clear weird factor that goes beyond just the kind of ominous orb itself. To start with, the project is funded and backed by Sam Altman, the guy who founded OpenAI, for example, so he is really both creating an AI problem and solving it with a for-profit business model on both ends. And the project's backers include extreme ultra-capitalist VCs like Andreessen Horowitz, for example. So even if the idea fundamentally sounds interesting, letting basically Scrooge McDuck decide who is and who isn't a human around the world for everyone, just gives me all the wrong vibes. Fun fact, Kenya, where a lot of the early irises were scanned, has already banned the project, and crypto in general is under scrutiny in the US right now, so users there just won't be paid for their world coins or their scans. Oh well. Okay, and for my third story of the week, we have to talk about Nintendo and this incredible new way of advertising that they and companies like them are pursuing. So Nintendo, which hasn't introduced a new game console since 2017, six years ago, actually delivered a record first quarter profit. And sure, it helped that they launched a new Legends of Zelda game, but the big news for sure is the Super Mario Brothers movie. This was the biggest movie in the box office so far this year, except for Barbie and Oppenheimer. So why is this interesting? Because the movie is one one gigantic ad that 168 million people paid to watch in a cinema that then created many other revenue streams after it. IP revenue at Nintendo is up 190%, having almost tripled, most of which the company attributes to the movie, while game revenue is also up 44%. In other words, people are buying a ton of Mario-based t-shirts, backpacks, games, etc. in large part because of the movie. So people are paying to watch a movie that then goes on to sell them all the other actual products afterwards. It's an incredible cycle, and as you might have noticed, it's not just Nintendo doing this. There's the Barbie movie, of course, which will sell an ungodly number of plastic dolls. There were video game movies recently like Gran Turismo, Sonic the Hedgehog, Uncharted, Detective Pikachu, and more that should sell games. And we have seen stuff like Formula One blowing up in the US just thanks to a well-made Netflix series too. Nintendo says that it will continue by expanding outside the dedicated video game platform business to create new opportunities to encounter Nintendo IP, invigorating our overall business. So what do you think they launch next? A Peach movie? A Zelda movie? Who knows? Now, at times when half the films, even in actual cinemas, are just thinly veiled ads, you really have to start looking into other places if you want to find high quality, thoughtful content. My favorite new Nebula original series, Red Atoms, is the one that I'd recommend you start with if you go to the platform, as it has just released a new episode yesterday. This series discusses the story of the Soviet Union struggling to become a nuclear power with beautiful visualizations and fantastic storytelling, and this new episode dives deep into the Chernobyl accident. Other recent originals that I would definitely recommend are Wendover's Logistics of X series that explores the hidden ways in which the world is run, Becoming Human by Real Science, which goes through our fascinating evolution process, and of course, my very own eight-part Nebula original series called Technorama as well. Nebula is a streaming service built by the most thoughtful creators on the internet, and on top of hosting originals, it of course also features our usual content and free and typically early access too. It's like all your favorite creators bought on steroids. And best of all, the platform is owned and operated by us, the creators, and it is financed not by shady ads or tracking or anything like that, but rather by direct subscriptions from people like you. So your subscriptions directly help us make more content. If you use my link, which you can find in the description, or on screen right now, you can get a yearly subscription for just $30, which is a $20 discount versus just using a generic link to sign up. So check it out. I really hope you enjoy all the new stuff that we put on the platform and I'll see you next Friday. <laughs>